or the age of the universe had to be seriously wrong. The data from the space telescope seemed impressive, but astronomers were confident that they'd got the ages of the stars right too. There's a really reliable way to measure the ages. And the physics that gives rise to the measurement is, is pretty straightforward. It's just burning of nuclear fuel. And we know how to do that to make power. So it's uh, the sort of physics that people do in industrial facilities, let alone uh, physics labs. So the process is extremely well understood. And it gives ages for the oldest stars that are at least 12 giga years. So if, it doesn't make sense that the oldest things in the universe are older than the universe. <laughs> but if it's true that the expansion of space is accelerating, then astronomers have been using the wrong formula to calculate the age of the universe. Acceleration would extend the cosmic age enough to account for the oldest stars with a comfortable margin of safety. The new figures indicate the universe is about 14 or 15 giga years old. So the accelerating universe helped to solve a paradox, but it still seemed a strange concept to many astronomers. Sometimes in science, a result as unexpected, as unorthodox as this gets put on the shelf and ignored for a few years in hopes that it'll go away. But as we'll see, a completely different group of scientists pursuing a different line of research has come up with new evidence that the growth of space is speeding up. Whether we like it or not, it seems there's a phantom foot pressing down on the cosmic accelerator. What is the current picture of the universe on the largest scale? We think it looks something like this. But don't be misled. We don't mean to suggest that the universe is shaped like your TV screen. It probably isn't meaningful to speak of the universe as having a shape at all. That would imply that you could somehow step outside the universe and view it from a distance. And don't ask what's beyond the borders of the screen either, because nobody knows. We can't say anything about the size of the universe except that it's huge. It might even be infinite for all we know. There's a limit to just how far we can see, and the universe seems to be fully populated with galaxies right up to that limit, and perhaps far beyond. But we believe that the universe has a pattern or a texture that would look about the same from any location. It's a texture rather like a sponge or the inside of a loaf of bread. Thin walls of material enclosing a huge number of bubbles or voids. Of course, the material that separates those bubbles isn't bread dough. It's made of galaxies, stars, and planets. Plus, a huge amount of mysterious dark matter. Stuff that we know is there because its gravity affects the things we can see, but that doesn't shine with any kind of radiation we can detect. And, of course, the whole thing is in motion. The funny thing about cosmology, it teaches us, as we would expect it to teach us, how strange the universe is. And we'd expect it to be strange in the sense that our intuition, our expectations, are founded on a very limited set of circumstances in a very strange and special part of the cosmos. A small rocky object, not really like the cosmos in general, though derived from it. So anything you found out is almost certainly likely to knock your socks off. When Edwin Hubble found the universe is expanding, why that was rather weird and strange. The expansion that Hubble discovered is rather like the rising of a loaf of bread. The bread part, the cosmic dough, if you like, doesn't actually get bigger. It's the bubbles that expand. Of course, in the cosmos, those aren't gas bubbles. They're empty spaces or voids. The expansion force seems to be a property of empty space, and it's actually inhibited by the presence of material objects. So, the galaxies aren't expanding. Our solar system isn't getting any larger. It's the spaces between the galaxies that are expanding. The emptiest parts of the universe, it seems, are swelling up. 
There's one more comparison we can make between the universe and a loaf of bread. Whatever sort of shape the cosmic loaf might have, it certainly isn't plain white bread. And the fact is, the universe is about as complicated as it could be. We probably have dark matter that is both baryons, neutrons and protons, the stuff we're made of, and non-baryonic dark matter, you know, some exotic thing that we particle physicists talk about as if they know what it is, but they haven't seen it. And then, uh, in addition to that, we have the most complicated, rich, interesting, baroque sort of universe you can imagine. We have something that also has this big component of vacuum energy, or at least that's the way it looks based on the supernova data. So I think what it tells you is the aesthetic approach, the simplest thing that you can think of, is not always a guide to the truth. Sometimes you just have to go look and you discover that the universe is actually much richer and more complicated um, than your imagination. In fact, it's always more complicated than you imagine. Our understanding of the cosmic expansion has undergone a change in recent years. Cosmologists see it as a kind of struggle between two almost balanced forces. Gravity tries to pull everything together, while the cosmic repulsion force attempts to blow everything apart. There's evidence that once, for a tiny fraction of a second near the very beginning, the repulsive force almost got the upper hand. The universe expanded enormously, then gravity kicked in and almost stopped the expansion in its tracks. It's been slowly picking up speed ever since. Among cosmologists, this scenario is known as the inflationary universe. It was devised in the late 1970s, primarily by Alan Guth of MIT. Inflation theory explained a number of cosmic puzzles, and it made a big hit with the cosmological community. The splash even caught the attention of the popular media, though not all the reporting was accurate. Some headlines claimed that a new breakthrough had disproved the Big Bang. Sometimes these headlines are a bit too terse. What they really mean is that we now have a modified version of the Big Bang, a more mature version, a better version. So it's not that the universe didn't begin with a hot compressed state, as the Big Bang theory had been saying for decades. It did. It's just that now we have a modification. Before the inflationary theory of the universe, we had no reason for the Big Bang. We had no reason for why the universe should be expanding. Now we have a reason. Given the creation of the universe and given an inflationary epoch, that naturally produces an expansion which later gives rise to the expansion that we see. The universe began hot and dense. It started out so terribly crowded, in fact, that all the matter and energy were compressed into a sort of plasma that was almost featureless. But it wasn't perfectly featureless. It was riddled with random fluctuations that made the density vary from place to place by the tiniest amount. Those small variations would grow over time. Eventually, the denser parts became galaxies and clusters of galaxies. The less dense regions became those cosmic voids whose growth drives the expansion of the universe. In the early days, before the voids got too large, the material parts of the cosmos, the galaxies, stars, 